So welcome to our webinar, which is going to give you some information about the Early Career Framework. Um, I'm really pleased to welcome all of you, th you that are here, um, but also those of you that are listening to the recording. My name is Kelly Mackay, I'm the ECF Director, and today I'd like to give you a little bit of information about Best Practice Network, talk to you about the Early Career Framework, what the training is made up of, and how we structure that, and then also invite my colleagues who will give you more information on our virtual learning environment and ways in which you can register your ECTs and your mentors with the DfE and with us. And we can get you up and running with the Early Career Framework training as soon as you are ready. So who are Best Practice Network? Um, I've just said as an ex-head teacher, um, I thought I'd escaped Ofsted. But no, in May of last of this year, sorry, um, we had Ofsted and we had seven inspectors and they went out to our delivery partners, they went out to our ECTs, to our mentors, and they talked to the management and the governors within Best Practice Network, and they said we were outstanding. So I always use that as, as a benchmark because we know how important that is in education. But Ofsted's opinion of us, in, my, in, my, in, in regards of what I think, is not actually the most important thing. It's actually what do you as school leaders think of us and what the ECTs and what the mentors think of our programme. And what they have said to us is they have said to us that we inspire learning, we work with our partners, we work with our schools and we act with integrity. We're always as transparent as we possibly can be. We always explain about how the ITT training that they've already received will lead into their ECF training and we strive for excellence with that training. We try to make sure that every single ECT has a programme which is tailored to their needs and stretches them and pushes them on. Because as a result of that training, we want them to be really excellent teachers. And as a result, that means the most important thing is that every child can benefit from an excellent education, regardless of their background, and that every educational professional that we train is able to grow and fulfil their potential. So we've been a school-led CPD provider since 2012. And we offer MPQs, apprenticeships, and many other um, training programs. We've just started the primary ITT training, and we'll be moving into secondary ITT training next year. So we're growing fast, but with the help and with the collaboration of the schools and the partners that we work with. And we have dedicated experts. Many of our um, leaders within the organization are ex-head teachers or ex-senior leaders, or have got a background in, in educational training, and they are here to support you. And they are there to build the teams and to create that really excellent training with an up-to-date research evidence base. So our ambition is for everybody to have outstanding professional development. We want to make sure that that training challenges and develops teachers and leaders through a really structured sequence training programme. So for example, with the ECF, we start off with how to create a really positive learning environment. We then move on to pedagogy. And we then, for example, in module four, which falls in the summer term, we look at assessment. So we want that sequence structured training that matches what happens in school. Because we want to empower all the teachers that we train and the leaders through our MPQ programs to develop their skills and knowledge so that it can make a real difference to the young people in schools. And you'll hear me talk about that a lot. The ECF is designed so that when we recruit high quality people, we retain them. And the idea is, is once we've recruited and retained those teachers, they have an impact in the classroom. So that journey that they go on, that golden thread that the DFE talks about is really important to us. And as I say, we have that progression from the ITT into the ECF, into the specialist MPQs and on into leadership, because we want them to all thrive with the professional development that they undertake. And we want to have a responsibility with you, school leaders and delivery partners for, for developing and delivering that training. So we cover the full ECF induction programme if we um, focus on the early career framework for a moment. Um, and we deliver to teachers on a national basis. I would suggest that around 80 to 85% of our training is actually delivered through our delivery partners, but we also have a national programme where schools can access the ECF through Best Practice Network. We have not just teaching school hubs as delivery partners, we have multi-academy trusts, former teaching school alliances, 
And in some areas, we have a lead school that might take on another eight to 10 schools within their local area, and they will deliver, we will train them, uh, we will train their facilitators, we will support them with marketing, we will support them with admin, and then they deliver um, the training for us. But these delivery partners that we have on a local basis ensure contextualization to the delivery. On a national basis, we have things like SEND groups, um, and we are focusing a little bit more on primary or secondary, so we can relate it to phase. And we're also thinking more about subject contextualization as well, because we think that's really important. And we work with all of these organizations, however large and small they are, to collaborate and understand what they want. And our delivery partners at the moment, they, they ask us every month for what we said you did. Um, and so we do, we respond on a very quick cycle as to, the, as to the differences that you as schools want. And in particular, what your ECTs and mentors want. So previously, for example, our mentoring program was 36 hours of training. But school leaders and mentors said to us, actually, I can't be released for that much time. And so what I'm actually going to do um, is I'm going to propose that we have less face-to-face -face training. And that's something that we have actually implemented into our program this year. So we're training in over 12,000 ECTs and their mentors. And it's a really, really popular program, um, which is seeing consistency and a high level of training across the, um, across the nation. So our ECF program com comprises of basically four parts. The ECT is required to do self-study and they have approximately 45 minutes to one hour of self-study every week. They then also have one hour of mentor meetings and in those mentor meetings, they will undertake module audits. And with their mentor, they will agree areas of expertise or areas where they need further development. And then the training can be tailored to meet this so it's differentiated to their needs. In addition to that, the ECT has um, has face to face training and it's approximately one session of face to face training per module. We have nine modules, but we actually um, deliver module five across the whole year. Module nine is about school visits and I'll give you some more information on that in a moment. Um, but there is approximately sort of four face to face sessions in year one and three in year two. And I, I've got a diagram that, that outlines that for you. What's really, really important, and I, and I was talking to, to some of you before this webinar, is that it, it, it's recognised that the ECF is a training programme. It is based around the teacher standards, but it is not an assessment framework. It is separate to the induction. So the induction tutor, along with the appropriate body, will be responsible for signing off new teachers at the end of the two years on a standard induction against the teacher standards. But the ECF is a training based program that runs alongside the induction. So how have we designed our program? You'll recognise this, many of you um, from CPD that you've undertaken yourself. It's based on the five principles of deliberate practice. We really want to challenge them. We want to make sure that no ECT sits there comfortably thinking they have passed their ITT year and they're now a teacher. None of us can say that. We've always got something to learn and we want our materials to push them and challenge their thinking. So from the offset, they'll use those module audits to actually set specific goals which are relevant and differentiated to each ECT. They'll then focus on the things that they need to do. So, for example, we talked earlier about a teaching assistant that actually may have quite a lot of experience in terms of supporting a positive learning environment and implementing um, behaviour management strategies. However, that teaching assistant may not have had as extensive experience in terms of uh, planning a lesson or implementing an assessment scheme. And so they might want to focus on different things and take different elements of the ECF training that they really do focus on when they are in the classroom. And then the mentor gives them high quality feedback. It may be that they pop into their lesson to see what they're doing, but more often than not, the observations will be left to the induction tutor um, for the, for the um, actual assessment against the teacher standards. What the mentor might do is have a look at a piece of assessment with them and how the scheme has been applied. Or they might look at a lesson plan against a scheme of work for the half term and assess whether it's appropriate and how it can be improved. Or they might actually say, right, well, you implemented this strategy in your classroom. How did it go? Can you describe the impact it's had? What would you do differently next time? And then the mentor will build upon that. 
In addition to that, it may involve an ECT going into someone else's classroom and actually looking at some a strategy um, or a practice that a, a, an experienced teacher is implementing. Go back and discuss it with their mentor and the mentor will give them that high quality feedback as to how to improve and implement it into their own practice. And by doing this over the two years, they will develop this mental model of expertise, which will have an outcome on their activities in the classroom. So I referred earlier to these um, ECF modules that we have. In year one, you'll begin to see this sequence now that we have that setting high expectations, positive learning environment and behaviour management strategies, which is when they start with us at the beginning of the year. Then going on to engaging the pupils into, in their learning and developing that conceptual understanding and memory recall and thinking about their own subject or phase. And then developing their pedagogy into the spring term and looking at the use of assessment into the summer term. And then module five, we received feedback on this and we changed it. It was at the end um, of, of the year. And people said, well, actually, to fulfill my professional responsibilities, for example, learning how to talk to parents, at a parents' evening or having a form group, I need to understand these right from the outset. So we've built it into our induction and we've built it across the year one. And then in year two, and I get very excited about this because these are what I would call action research pieces of learning. We do three inquiries where an ECT will take maybe a school priority or they will look at a priority within their class and they will have the evidence why it is a priority and what the data sets are underpinning the need for it to be a development. So let's take, for example, maths in year six with white British boys. And the data shows that traditionally white British boys in year six have underperformed in maths. And what the ECT will do is they will take their learning, the learn facts from year one, and they will think about the learn hows, how to implement strategies that will improve that. And then they will put them into practice in their classroom. And then very importantly, they will need to evaluate based on qualitative or quantitative data, what the impact has been. And then at module nine is about school visits. And that's an exciting one as well. It's about getting the ECTs out to other settings, whether it's a contrasting setting or whether it's a similar environment. And if we build on that maths example, it may be that they go to a secondary school and they look at um, the progression or it may be that they go to specialist setting to look at early maths it's it's linking into their inquiries um, that they're undertaking so this is the diagrammatic form of what the ECT's um, training will look like and you will see that they have a induction at the beginning of years one and two and that's either nationally held by best practice network or increasingly partners have asked if they can do it themselves face to face in the local area, which has proved hugely popular this year. And they also then will have the regional events that I talked about. And sorry, yes, it's one, two, three, four, five there um, across the first year, along with their self-study that I talked about and their mentor meetings. And then you'll see the slightly less in year two, because obviously the ECT is on the reduced timetable of 5% as opposed to the 10%. And then you can see there that module nine, the school visits. We propose two visits of two hours each to fit in with the um, ECT's availability. But if they choose to do one of four hours, or perhaps you um, give them some more entitlement, some time, some self-directed time, you know, there is, there is flexibility within our programme. We're also happy that it won't necessarily take place in summer term. It may take place at any time over year two. We do have that flexibility and we have experts that are happy to either work with you or for you just to check in with us and say, this is what we're proposing for them. What do you think? And we have mentor surgeries. We have ECT surgeries and they can just pop in. We have those once every half term where we're happy to answer any questions that you might have on the ECT's progression. So the importance of mentors, this to us is really crucial. And I wasn't able to introduce Nikki at the beginning, um, but I will introduce her at the end. She has kindly come on. Nikki is from one of our teaching school hubs and is a, is a highly experienced person in terms of um, teacher training, but has just undertaken the role of mentor this year. Um, and, and mentors for us, they're key to the success of the ECF programme. As a head teacher, you need to choose the right mentor um, we're happy to provide guidance on who the right person is, 
wherever possible, they should be different to the induction tutor and, and preferably different to their line manager. Although I know either in a small primary school or even in a secondary school where resources are becoming even more incredibly limited, it is difficult. But that person should have the ability to be a mentor that is supportive and developmental because we use the on-site mentoring model, which is non-judgmental at all. And also, if they have got a second role, that they then should be able to separate them. And the mentor must have the dedicated time. So the DfE provide funding to schools to make sure that the mentor um, can do their own training. And the school should provide that protective time for an ECT and a mentor to meet once a week um, in year one and once a fortnight in year two. And wherever possible, if the mentor can complete the full ECF programme over the two years, this is what the ECTs are telling us. It's what we already knew at the beginning, but it's what the ECTs and the mentors are telling us. If the ECT has the same mentor that isn't a line manager or isn't an induction tutor, they really feel the value of that mentor supporting them with their development through their first two years. And this is what the mentor programme looks like. So the mentor programme is, is, you can see the similar structure but on a, reduced, um, on a reduced scale now because of the timings. They will also have an induction at the beginning of each year where we explain what the requirements are, what the expectations are, um, give them information about the ECF and, and the framework and explain to them how they can use the on-site model to support their ECTs. They also have this dedicated training time, which as I say, we, we have this about roughly 80, 20 or 85, 15%. Um, we are finding at the moment that the mentors really enjoy going to local face-to-face -face training events. And they also have some self-study, which they complete themselves, which develops their skills and knowledge. And then you can see the reduction in the time requirements for them in year two. So just to give you a, a flavour of, of the programme in year two um, and what they might do. I've talked about the inquiries and the way that they will, it will, it will, it's a spiral curriculum, basically, so it revisits what they've done in year one, but also, importantly, how it will enable them to improve their practice and, it, and have an impact on the children in the classrooms. So in the autumn term one, they will do a very small action piece of research, and it, which is an inquiry into one area of practice that they choose from either standards one or seven. And it's a really quick exploratory inquiry into the impact of their existing practice because they will have done a year in the classroom by this point. And then in autumn year two, they do a second small inquiry again, and they will use their audit to identify an area of practice that they want to build upon and that they want to develop. It might be an area of strength, for example, which we talked about, or it might be an area where they feel that they want to delve more deeply and undertake more research themselves. And then module eight sits across two terms and it's a longer inquiry about quality of pedagogy and the use of assessment. And then we talked about module nine, which is where they can go on and they can visit the school, visit other schools to prepare the ECT um, for, for their role as, as, a, as, a, as a fully qualified QTS teacher. So this just highlights what I talked about with the example about how an inquiry cycle works. They will ask the question about what needs improving. It may be that they do that with their mentor. As I said, it may be that they take on a departmental or a whole school priority, or it may be something that they feel is pertinent to their, to their own individual classroom. They'll investigate it. They'll then use the learning from a year one to innovate strategies to put into place, which they then reflect on and draw conclusions and evaluate what the impact has been. So I, that's quite a whistle-stop tour of our programme. Um, I was always happy to make individual appointments with people to go over it further and to, and to show people more. But I just want you to look at this if you can. And I'm going to hand over to Joseph to explain to you about our virtual learning platform um, and what Canvas brings to the programme. So um, uh, we... I am unmuted. Good. Uh, so we use uh, Canvas as our virtual learning environment, which is one of the main VLEs that are available around the world. Uh, and we have two purpose-built VLE programmes, uh, one for the ECTs and one for the ECMs, as um, Kelly mentioned. And it's important to understand that these are both separate programmes that give each uh, cohort of uh, participants everything that they need. So the ECTs have all of the materials, all the support materials that they need to work their way through the two years. 
and the ECMs have all of the materials that they need to learn to be the best mentor they can be and all the information they need to give their ECTs the best support through the two years. Um, we've designed our um, uh, VLE to follow a, a modular logical structure. So each term, uh, the, the participants are working their way through the different modules. We've made it as clear as possible, navigation and uh, how to jump directly to the areas you need. Um, one of the things that we've spent a lot of time and effort on is the video guidance um, that's built into the system at the point of need. So if ever you're asked to do an online study session, there is a short video showing you how to do an online study session. If we're asking you um, to fill out a quiz or a survey, there is a video actually explaining to you how to uh, fill out the survey. Uh, a lot of the time this is not needed, but for those people that do need it, they literally have that support on the page where they are interactive. Um, along with this, we provide uh, drop-in support sessions. And again, these are termly, and these allow uh, ECTs, ECMs, and indeed induction tutors to come along to ask any questions, to raise any issues that they have with us. And uh, myself and my team, uh, and Nick and his team, will provide support in those. Um, and, uh, uh, we do get, I've mentioned access for ECTs and for ECMs, but we also provide access to induction tutors. So um, an ECM, a mentor, will see the mentor course and everything in there and be able to interact with it. Uh, an ECT will see the ECT course and be, everything in it and be able to interact with it. Um, an induction tutor will see both of those courses, but it's more of a godlike view. They can see everything, but do nothing. Um, so that allows you to get a feel for how each of the courses are and see what your um, staff are engaging with. Um, it's very uh, important, Kelly mentioned, uh, that it's better if you can split the role of induction tutor and mentor. But if you are doing both of those roles, you really do need to think about which hat you're wearing when you log in to the VLE. If you are being a mentor and you're wanting to engage with the materials and actually have your uh, participation noted, you need to log in as a mentor. Because if you log in as an induction tutor, again, godlike view, see everything, do nothing. Um, we also build in uh, multimedia practice activities. We have a, a lot of um, very well designed, very uh, engaging materials that walk you through um, uh, the different areas. Uh, and on top of that, a large number of case studies and exemplars. And uh, over time, we've been adding in a more and more contextualization. So you have different phases, different subjects. And uh, I'll, I'll look at uh, Kelly if, if there's uh, further uh, differentiation. Uh, what we've also been doing is building in stretch materials uh, to some of the modules. So this is gradually coming. So uh, if, if you uh, feel that you are strong in a particular area, we'll come back to the audit. And you look at the materials and you think, yeah, I know this area. There is stretch materials that, you know, this is an area I'm already strong. But um, as Kelly referred, as teachers, we never stop learning. So um, there is always something more. There is always something to do. And we're building that into that as well. Um, it also gives you access to um, all of the event resources. So if you have an event that is coming up, you can look at the materials that are going to be covered and you can look at the preparation that would be beneficial for you. So everything you need is on Canvas, apart from uh, if we move on to the school dashboard and participant dashboards. So they, we have a number of dashboards um, uh, and each of these are tailored for each particular person. Uh, your induction tutor, so I'm going to talk mainly about the school dashboard. And this will allow you to see all of your ECTs and mentors, all of their events, uh, where they're going for those events, whether those events are online, whether they attended those events. And it also, um, as, a, as a reference, we have found that occasionally, particularly for some of the larger schools with large numbers of ECTs, uh, they, they'll, they'll go to the staff room and watch as a group, which is really good. It's strong pedagogically. You know, it gives them that ability to discuss, but it makes it quite hard for us to take attendance because we get one person turning up on the Zoom. So there is a way for uh, you as an induction tutor to indicate that a person was engaged with those events on that school dashboard. So you'll see if they've attended and if they've not attended, you know they have, and it must be if you know they have, uh, you can indicate that they have. Um, so that gives you your overview. It also gives you um, that we, we don't really have 
grades and assessments, but it, it allows you to see their progression on, on Canvas. So if they've engaged with the self-study module and finished it, you will see that they've uh, got that ticked as complete. So that's your school dashboard. Um, related to that, they as participants have a participant dashboard, which gives them everything they need to know about their events. Uh, we sometimes get asked why we can't just put the events on Canvas. We're a very large organization. Uh, there are hundreds and hundreds of groups across the um, uh, country. So you can't just have the events on your VLE. You do need a dedicated place that shows you your events, your group, what you are going to do. And uh, again, that allows them to go in, see their events, uh, see the location, see any details that are um, pertinent to that location, such as parking. If it's an online event, it allows them to uh, it should register beforehand or and or uh, jump in on the day. Um, and again, it shows whether or not they've attended. So they will be able to, to look back over their past attendance Brings us slightly back to Canvas. One of the things we do, again, if you possibly can, you do want to attend because attending is the best and the richest and the strongest. Um, pedagogically allows you to discuss and talk with our excellent tutors. But if you don't, there are videos that we release shortly afterwards on Canvas of an exemplar event. So you can watch that event and indicate that you have uh, attended in that way. And I think I rattled through my uh, thing slightly too quickly, but that does give you an overview of, of, of Canvas and the dashboards. With those two systems, you have everything you need. Um, again, for our participants who are studying with us, when they filled out their application, they would have been using the same areas as the dashboard. Again, we try and make it as seamless as possible, that progression through. So you finish your application. As soon as your application is approved, you get a link that says my participant dashboard. It shows you all your events. And when you're in that, there's a link to Canvas, our virtual learning environment. As soon as that is available to you, you see your login and it tells you what your password will be and you can jump from the dashboard to Canvas. Um, and again, uh, there are videos explaining all of this to our participants so that they can literally watch and click their way through and on. Again, the vast majority of our participants don't need it, but if it can save us a few people who might have struggled otherwise, it's always worth doing. That's excellent, Joseph. Um, this webinar is only designed to give a brief overview. Um, I think your summary that our virtual learning platform and our dashboards provide everything that the ECTs, the mentors, the school leaders, the delivery partners, um, it provides everything that you need to know. If you're interested in going more in depth in, in it, then what we will do is we'll arrange a separate meeting and we will actually go into it live and walk you through. So I'm just going to move on now to just talk a little bit about what we can do for you. Because this webinar is not only for school leaders, um, it's also maybe for larger schools, multi-academy trusts or delivery partners that want to work with us. Um, so we would provide a whole range of support for that. And we would do marketing support for you. So if you're new to us and you wanted to create um, a small group around you as a school, school, or if you're a teaching school hub and you want to um, promote the early career framework that best practice offer that you would be delivering, we would do as much or as little as you want. So this gives an example of what we've done for one of our teaching school hubs, Chilton, and we have created um, social media posts. We create actual um, hard booklets, what I, I call hard as in um, paper-based booklets. We would do website um, banners. We would promote it in any way that you would like to the schools within your area. Um, and we are more than happy to do what you want for you. And I think that that's really important that we say that. So people come to us and say, right, can you do this? Can you do that? Will you come to this conference with us? Will you come and, and do um, a welcome to all of our ECTs and our mentors and do, a, and do a talk? We will do whatever we can within our, our reach. Um, so I think that that's really important to say. And the way we work with our local delivery partners is we encourage you to take that lead. You are the people that know your schools, you know your ECTs, you know your mentors, you know your induction tutors, and you know your head teachers. And you also know the context of your area. Are there a number of small rural primary feeder schools, for example? Do you have a large number of grammar or private schools within the area that, that, makes, that, that select students? All of these sorts of things can have an impact on recruiting and retaining 
your ECTs. So when we work with you, we want to provide full access to all of our training programs. We will also help you to write case studies, to do podcasts, to do small videos that actually tailor the delivery even further. And we will provide um, all the back office management and support. So for example, for teaching school hubs, we do KPI reports um, that, are, that we know need to be submitted to the DFE um, three times a year. But in terms of registering your ECTs as an individual school, we will help you with that. And, and Nick's going to talk to you a little bit more about how you can register ECTs with us. And we want you to shape and inform our programme design. So for example, Chilton, but also Astra, has helped us to produce some SEND materials and organisations such as Alban Teaching School Hub have produced secondary podcasts which relate to geography, drama, PE and they give top tips to ECTs based around the teacher standards. So we want to involve you as much as possible. So anything that you want and you ask for, as I say, within our reach, we will do. And we have all of these things. I won't go too much into this because I think if partners want to work with us, we would actually welcome an individual um, conversation with you. Because what we do is we look at the um, participants, we look at the learner, and we take them right through from that ET, ITT, ECF and MPQs, which we've talked about that golden thread. And we monitor them for you. And we give you all that information. Joseph said, we can tell you whether your ECTs have actually attended an event or whether they've done their online learning. And we can tell you that in live time through you accessing, accessing a dashboard. So you can look yourself and you can think, did my ECT go to that training event? Have they been doing their weekly study? And you can go on and you can track that. And that's where your induction tutor has access to the school's dashboard. But as a partner, if you wanted to develop a partnership of schools around you, we can tell you who's registered through you as our partner, how well they're doing. We can give you access to evaluation information on your facilitators and things like that. So I think that this is a bigger discussion and we'd welcome the opportunity to talk to you. But we really do support our partners um, and the development of our partners in any which way that we can. And I put on there that people can read in the presentation some quotes these are three new uh, partners that have come to us within the last 12, 12 to 18 months. And they are people that have chosen to come to Best Practice Network. Um, and and they've, they've said on there what their reason is for moving to us. Um, and these, at least two of these people are on um, the advisory board, which forms the governance board. We encourage you as delivery partners to be on our governance board so that you can hold us to account for the training that we're delivering and that you can hold us to account um, and, and, and make us responsible for the quality of the programme. So I'm going to stop there and I'm going to hand over to Nick, who's going to talk you through how to enrol your ECT and the mentor for the first time if you're joining Best Practice Network. Thanks, Nick. No problem and good afternoon, everybody. This is a relatively straightforward process, actually. Um, I think the, the first thing to do if you are coming to us for the first time is to go onto our website and the link is there and register your school with us. And that makes you visible to us. If you, if you don't register your, your school, obviously we can't see you. So once that bit, that bit has been done, the second stage is all really managed by the Department for Education. And they have taken a great deal of effort to significantly improve the registration process for the um, for, for ECF and have done a good job of it. So the first thing to do is that you will need to register or confirm that you'll be registering participants for the 2023-2024 academic year. And I have provided a link to that page but you may well also have received an email from the DFE inviting you to confirm that you are going to be registering participants for 2023-2024. And then once you have done that, you will then be able to register your participants. Um, can we go on to the next slide, please? So, what will happen on the DFE website is there is a guided user interface. So you can't go past something until you have completed the first part. So 
you, you will be prompted to select the type of ECF program that you want. And if you're coming with us, you'll be looking at the full induction program delivered by a provider. And after you've done that, you can then add your ECTs and mentors through the interface. It is very, very straightforward. And the other thing that happens once you are there is it, it will ask you to, once you've added the ECT, you can then link the mentor that will be going to that ECT with them. Um, and once, once that is done, we will, uh, and we have partnered with your school, the Department of Education will send us basic information, which is done electronically. And it doesn't cover a huge amount of information, but it's, it's enough for us to make contact. And we will then directly ask the ECTs and mentors to complete a short application form. And then when we have this, we will create their training schedule. And once the training schedule is complete, is set up, that is when they will receive their participant dashboard. And we will also give them access to Canvas shortly after we have uh, received their application for BPN. But at that point, they are kind of good to go. Um, if you are looking to transfer to, um, existing ECTs and mentors to Best Practice Network, then you need to register your school with us again if you haven't already. And there is a slide there to show you what you need to do to notify them that you intend to transfer those individuals to a new provider. And again, once that has been done, we will be able to partner with the school. We have to do that for each academic year. So if you want us to have 2023, 24, then we need to be made of it. You need, you need to make the school available for us to partner with, with you there. And if you're looking to transfer 22, 23, likewise, and any that might be left over from 21, 22, although that's highly, highly unlikely at this stage, we will then receive those applications from DFE. And at that point, we will take over the whole enrollment process. So the only thing that a school should need to do is to register the school with us and then to do the registrations with the DFE and everything will then be taken over by us for the onboarding. And that's it from me, thank you. Fantastic, thanks Nick. So I'm going to bring this webinar to a close and thank you again for your time. There is um, lots of useful information, but I would really advise you, there is so much out there about the ECF that we are more than happy um, for you to contact us, ecf at bestpracticenet.co.uk. We can arrange partnership meetings with you. We can arrange individual school meetings with you. We can support your ECTs and your mentors. Um, so please do get in touch with us if you need anything and we'll arrange to talk to you individually. So there are the resources that we've popped on that we think are particularly useful, but more importantly, here are our contact details um, our ECF at Best Practice Network um, email. There is also an IT help desk email there. So for those people that are struggling as a, an induction tutor um, to have access or for a school leader or for a delivery partner um, in terms of Canvas, then they can contact the IT help desk and the telephone number is always available for you to just call us directly and there will be somebody there to help you. I will stop the recording now and thank you all for your time.